everyone, I'm Katherine Martin, founder of Quiet Time Ministries. Every day, I have the privilege of meeting alone with the one who created me, who made the world. His name is Jesus, and he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is my quiet time. If you've known me for any length of time, then you know that one of my heroes of the faith is Corrie Ten Boom. She is the woman who was taken to Ravensbrück concentration camp during World War II. And during that time, she saw her sister cruelly mistreated and watched her ultimately go home to be with the Lord. One day, Corey heard her name announced over the loudspeaker during morning roll call. She had no idea what would happen. She had been prisoner 66730 for so long that she almost didn't recognize her name. Stand to the side, the guard ordered. Corey wondered, what is going to happen? Why have I been singled out? Has someone reported the Bible? You see, God had worked a miracle by getting a Bible in with them, and they were able to hold secret Bible studies each day, offering hope to these imprisoned, suffering women. She stood to the side as roll call continued. Finally, the siren blew for dismissal and the guard signaled her to follow. Corey hobbled behind the guard, her feet painfully swollen and her shoes held together with bits of string. Corey was led into the administration barracks and stood in front of a large desk. The officer behind the desk called her name, Ten Boom, Cornelia. She stepped to the desk and steadied herself against the desk. The officer wrote on a piece of paper stamped it and called out Entlassen, which translated released, then handed Corey the piece of paper. At the top of the paper were the words written in large black letters, Certificate of Discharge. Dazed and almost unbelieving, she walked through a door to the left and was handed a railway pass, entitling Corey to transportation through Germany to the Dutch border. When she received the final approval for release, she was given clothes, a day's bread ration, her watch, her Dutch money, and her mother's wedding ring. The heavy iron doors of the prison swung open and Corey walked out of that concentration camp and on to the train station. Following a long train journey, she got off the train and stepped onto her home soil, Holland. Corey became what she called a tramp for the Lord where she traveled throughout the world, telling people that with Jesus, if the worst happens, the best remains and his light is brighter than the deepest darkness. She certainly knew the truth of those words. She was in one of those worst case scenarios of life where you are overwhelmed with trouble and impossibility. What should you do in those times? Corey knew because she was well-versed in God's word, especially his promises. And you can know too. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 gives the answer. Listen to these words. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. In these words, we learn not to worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Corey was a woman of prayer, and you need to be a person of prayer, passionate prayer, where you pour out your heart to the Lord and cry out to him. The result is the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension. Just imagine having that inner powerful peace, even in a place like Ravensbrook. Corey used to say, God has no problems, only plans. Oh friend, we need to learn to adopt those words in every situation. Let's say it together. God has no problems, only plans. And then let us learn not to live in worry, but instead 
to pray about everything. Lord, today, we thank you that you have no problems, only plans, and we can't wait to see you carry out your plans and purposes in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's my quiet time. God bless you as you continue on in the great adventure of knowing him.